What are you doing? Hey. Oh, I was working on the skin here on the wherever you go. And I wanted to just clean up my little edges here, my joints here where I'm going to weld. Because I've got a little gap in here that I have to fill. Because I didn't cut it quite right. I didn't fit it exactly right. So this is where the pulse control on that longevity MIG weld 250 comes in. So I can set the pulse. So I can come in here and work in this you know, gap that's just a little too big. And I'm not going to blow through, hopefully. <laughs> and I can fill that weld in or fill that gap in. And I can come back with my grinder and just smooth it off. What can the pulse do that, that you couldn't just do with a regular MIG welder? Well, the pulse is just that. It, it takes the welding arc and it turns it on, turns it off, turns it on, turns it off. Really, really fast. <laughs> and what it does is it allows you to have the, the right voltage so you've got the right heat, you've got the right penetration going on, but it only does it for a fraction of a second instead of continuously. So you can kind of control the temperature a little better, if you will. You know, you, you still get penetration, but then it shuts off. And it cools for, for you know, a, a millionth of a second or so. Then it turns back on. Then it shuts back off. Then it turns back on. That's what the pulse is for. And you can adjust that infinitely over there. Not, not only the frequency of the pulse, how many times per second it pulses, but also the width of the pulse. How long is it off or on? You can adjust all that over there. So you still have the right voltage, you still have the right wire feed, you still have the right penetration, but you don't burn through as bad. You don't, you don't blow a big hole because it got too hot because you were just welding. So that's what the pulse is. So let me just flip the switch here so I can turn it on so you can see the, see the settings. Wake up. So you see it's about, it's about 17.8 volts. We turn that down just a little bit with the pulse voltage. Turn it down to about 17. I got 212 on the wire feed. My frequency is set pretty high. I want that pulse on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off. I want it coming on and off a lot. I don't want it to just, you know, like once a second. I want it a whole bunch of times. The pulse width. I have turned way down. And of course, when you change the pulse width, you change the voltage. So we'll try that. Pulse width is down at about three and a half. Pulse frequency is up at eight. The voltage is at 17, and wire feed is at 212. So why did you turn down the width? Don't you want to have a, as much wire feed as possible? No, no, that's wire feed. The width, the pulse width, how, for how many millions of a second is the pulse on or off? You can adjust that. So you can have a long pause or a short pause. So you can get more pulses in per second or you can get uh, you know, a wider gap between pulses in. You gotta play with it really to, to get it all in your head. Uh, you know, th this is where Doing it gives you a lot of experience. This is also where going to class helps, where you've got a professional standing there who does this for a living, who can say, okay, yeah, he, you know, he kind of knows what he's talking about, but this is the real deal. If you really want to learn this stuff right, take a class. That's what they're there for. So grab your helmet, and we'll play with this a little and make some sparks. I see that actually worked pretty good. Just the settings that I had on there for the pulse and the voltage, and I could fill in that big gap without having to sit there and you know and bubble gum it. It didn't burn through or anything. So let me let me change the pulse just a little. Let me slow the pulse down so I have less pulses per second. 
and I might bump the voltage just a little bit, and then I'll run down this seam right here. We can fill that guy in too. So, hang on, let me change that. So what are you changing it to, Cap? Well, uh, okay. Well, I left the pulse width where it was, and I turned the pulse frequency down to about three, and I bumped the voltage up from 17 up to about 17.8. Just give it a little more heat, because I've got less of a gap. I've got that piece of eighth inch plate right underneath there, so it can take some of the heat. And then I can get a nice fill, I can get a nice bead in there, you know, and I shouldn't have any problems. Actually, I might turn the voltage up just a little bit more, give it a little more heat, and I can go ahead and do the rest of these and keep working. Did that let you run a longer bead than you might have otherwise? Well, sure, it, because it's a little cooler, because it's got, uh, you know, the, the pulse is turned down just a little. I can come in here and run a nice long bead all the way down through, and come back and get the next one and run all the way through. Just make sure you don't lean up against it to reach across. That gets painful, but uh, yeah, it, this is why you have all the different controls. This is why you have the ability to, to set your different functions the way you want them to adapt to the changing situation. Anyways, well, let me get back to work here and I'll see you guys later.